This video is brought to you by DankRitual.com. If you use the promo code DREW10 at checkout, you can get 10% off of your order of the tan or green two-player cloth playmats. Get your playmat today. My promo code DREW10 also gives you 10% off of a pink or blue yokai deck box to keep your deck safe. So go ahead and grab one of those while you're getting your playmats too. What is going on, everybody? It is Drew. Traveler of the Burning Abyss here with another video and as promised I am delivering my Burning Abyss video uh, that I posted about in my community tab earlier today and I'm very excited to show this list off. This is a list that has the ability to go first or second. Um, a lot of times going second is almost better because you can just break boards apart and I kind of designed the deck to be kind of going second based uh, rather than going first you know um it was just my personal call and uh, i think that going second works great going first it's not it's not as good but i think that it's still got potential um i think the deck is just it, it's got its weak points but it's also got its strong points too so i just try and i try and keep in mind that there's a lot that you can do with this deck uh no matter you know whether you win or lose the dice roll so let's go ahead and jump right on into this before we do if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button turn the notification bell on so you know when i upload more cool and awesome content just like the video you're watching right now and uh yeah let's go ahead and take a look so i've gone over this in my head probably about 15 20 times as to how i would want to format this um i was gonna go to a regional today and i had other plans that popped up that were um, significantly more fun <laughs> than going to a regional for the day. So I opted to uh, go with those plans and, uh, you know, it was significantly more enjoyable. So uh, I would have played Burning Abyss if I went to a regional today, but um, I, I didn't, so I didn't play BA. But this is the, the, the list that I probably would have played if I had gone. Uh, I don't think there's a lot that I would have changed. I, I did make one swap before the video that I thought was um, decent, and I'll talk about that when we get towards the end of the main deck. But starting with the BAs, we have three graph. Um, we already know why we're playing three graph, like it's the best BA. Um, also have three seer because you don't, like, drawing this card is not a brick. Like it's, just, it's still really good um yeah it's just crazy just keep looping your dante like that's pretty darn good uh three scarm because searching is really important in the end phase to regain the advantage of whatever resources you just kind of you know launched in your graveyard so scarm gets you there two farfa uh it's a good spot removal i never want the third for the most part i don't think there's ever been a time where i've really wanted a third so um, I'm perfectly content with playing two. I am playing another two of, which um, I actually, I'm kind of liking so far. I've been thinking about doing this for a while. And that is two copies of Alec. Um, the reason that I up this to two is because like a lot of times, all the decks in the meta for the most part are playing like these negations. So if you can go ahead and bait out a negation, um, or just a regular effect, like you just dump this and then you negate Mirror Jade, like now you're you're good, like you don't have to worry about it, you just Foolish Burial this and then their Mirror Jade does nothing. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of important, like being able to shut stuff off or bait stuff out. So I opted to two, um, I'll let you guys know what I think as I progress with the deck. Then the one of one Bar Bar, uh, one Cal Cab and one Libic. I think these are pretty standard in most of my lists. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, Libic is really good to extend and, you know, try and push for push for game. Calcab is good to just get rid of back row or forced out. And then Barbar -Bar is just good to really win with win game. Um, <clears throat> I played a game against my brother where I was able to make um, a Dante and an access code. And the Dante had been put up to 25, but I had used another Dante to make the access code. So I had added back the Barbar. -Bar. So I hit him for 7,800 direct, and then main phase two, I discarded the Barbar -bar to make the Dante on field into Beatrice. Um, and that like was able to let me burn him for game because I had already hit him for 7,800 direct, so I just banished one BA and I stole the game with it. So yeah, uh, really, really good. 
Then we have our honorary Burning Abyss Monsters, our three copies of Fiendish Rhino Warrior. Um, yeah, just a good card. Like, I don't, it's three more BAs. So I don't know what to tell you. It's better than Tour Guide because it doesn't get hit with Ash, um, which is one of the most popular hand traps. The only downside is that it does get hit with, like, Valor and Imperm, and that does suck. But um, you're playing so many BAs, like, you won't see this as often. So, and two Tour Guides. I really want to cut this down to one. Um, like, really want to cut this down to one. But I don't know. Um, two is okay. It's just that there's a lot of hand traps, so it's like I really don't want a normal summon this. Waste my normal summon and then be, you know, shit out of luck. So, and last monster for um, our actual like engine stuff is Fairy Tail Snow. I think that it's pretty obvious why we would play this card. It's just another interruption. It's an extender too. So, yeah, Snow is kind of a must. Then moving on to um, our. I, I don't know if you want to call them consistent, consistency cards or extenders or starters, whatever you want to call them. Um, we have three Prosperity and one Foolish Burial. So, like, I think that these are still really important. I have a lot of people who are like, why are you playing Prosperity? Like, why don't you play a Lure? And it's like, I, I don't want to play a Lure. Um, like, drawing two cards is not nearly as good as looking at three to six cards. Like, uh, I, I just, I think that Prosperity is significantly better. Um... That, that's just me like I, I i think that when you're playing a build that wants to kind of go second to it's like all right i, I kind of want to keep all the cards that i have in my hand and just add cards to it rather than have to banish cards um so there's going to be a point where it's like all right i have two darks and then i don't draw into another dark and now i have to banish one because of a lure and now i can't like make any xyz monsters so yeah i'd just rather play the prosperity um it's it's a lot better please, please don't play a lure unless you're on a budget like if you're on a budget like by all means go for it um or play desires if you're on a budget desires is probably better actually <laughs> um just because like it, it doesn't make you like lose cards from your hand you just gain cards so yeah uh then the foolish this is just an extender it's something that gets you one card deeper in your deck your combo whatever you need um yeah foolish is always really good in this deck now we have the going second stuff um well before we talk about the going second stuff i'm just going to throw out that i'm playing the one copy of called by um uh, I don't know whether to include this in the going first or going second portion of stuff. I, I don't know where to include this in the deck profile. But we're playing Call By because um, multiple reasons. If you out a Mirror Jade, you can banish it from your opponent's grave and then they don't get the effect. Um, or, you know, anything else. Your opponent tries to hand trap you and you just, you know, drop your, your Call By. Uh, moving on to all the going second cards, though. We have three copies of Ash because, like, it's the best hand trap right now. Let's be realistic. Three copies of DD Crow, um, also a very solid hand trap right now. One of my favorite hand traps right now, actually. Uh, love this card so much. Three copies of Imperm, also a really good card. Not playing Valor. Um, didn't have the room to play Valor because I wanted to play 40 exact, and uh, the Imperm was, was what I was going with. Then we have three copies of Forbidden Droplet, which is really good. Um, if you're playing on a budget, you can either play Forbidden Chalice, or if you wanted to play Valor, you could. Um, but I, I think that, like, you want a spell card. So, like, Chalice or Droplet. Like, that's that's my personal opinion. Um, I just think that they're probably the best choices. Like I said, if you're playing on a budget, then obviously the Chalices are probably going to be what you go with. Um, then lastly, the One Harpy's Feather Duster, because we don't want to get blown out by back row. We do want to have some sort of fighting chance. Um you know if your opponent is playing mystic mind then yeah you kind of <laughs> you kind of want to out mystic mind um which by the way i'm just gonna throw this out there uh, mystic mind is fine like <laughs> i'm not gonna go any further than that but my mystic mind is a perfectly fair card in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, considering what combo decks can do uh, but that's the main deck i'm gonna talk about um the change that i made so originally i was playing three lightning storm and the cards that i had cut let me just pull them out here um, the cards that I had swapped these out for were the one Alec, the one tour guide, and the one called by. Um, so I, I've made it clear already in the video that this is a blind going second build of the deck. So like lightning storm in theory makes a lot of sense because you can out more back row decks. Or if your opponent puts all their guys in attack position, you can go ahead and bait out a negation, or you could just wipe their board. Um, 
it's it's argue it's arguable that you could you know go either way depending on what you want to do but my thought process behind throwing in the um the second tour guide the the called by and the second alec were that they still are cards that can be good going first or second um the only one that i'm still iffy on is the tour guide being at two um because honestly like i i I have never wanted to see Tour Guide in the entirety of me playing um, the hands that I have so far with this deck. Like, I I would much rather see a card that's going to break a board and two Burning Abyss cards um, because then Zeus just becomes easily accessible. So, yeah. Um, but, like, if you, if you want to test out both ways, by all means, go for it. I, I'm not opposed to either. I'm also not opposed to like building your deck the way that you want to build it. I feel like I should make that clear. Um, I have a lot of people who are like, well, what if I want to do this? It's like, great. If you want to do that, go for it. I'm not, I'm not stopping you. Like, I'm just here to show you how I play the deck. <laughs> Whatever you do with your deck is totally up to you, man. Like that, that's totally on you. I have uh, no issues with whatever you're going to do with it. You, you, you go ahead and you make your deck how you want to make your deck. That's, that's totally up to you. I'm just here to show people um, how I play mine. But that's the main deck. Let's go ahead and hop on over to the extra. Now, the extra deck, I'm also kind of torn on, not because of the ratios that I'm playing. I like the ratios that I'm playing. It's just about how I want to build the extra deck. And I feel like I'm going to have to go to a couple tournaments to really feel out what I like best. Um, but I'm going to show you guys what I'm running with right now and go over my thought process. Uh, starting off, I'll show you just my my standard ratio, um, which is my, my double Dante, my Beatrice, and my purple Dante. Um, I think most people know this is like really what I what I go for. Um, this is not something that I stray from. Like I, I, I just I think this is the best ratio of your burning abyss cards, um, and for good reason. Like the you don't need a third Dante ninety nine percent of the time. Like it's very rare that you need a third Dante. Um, the Beatrice is obviously a one, and the Pilgrim is just a card that if you summon it, you probably win the game. So, yeah. Uh, I do play the Fortune Tune, which everyone knows I'm playing the Fortune Tune because this card basically just says, hey, by the way, you can make Zeus. Um, it's also good to note that it can be targeted, so like that's actually insane. Um, your opponent isn't going to be able to do a lot to this. Like You can just swing uh, at something, detach so it doesn't get destroyed, and then you just make a Zeus in main phase two because you're not going to be able to target it. Um, so yeah, Fortune Tune, crazy card. Uh, this next thing, I am actually uh, going to go out and say that this is probably the best addition I've made to a Burning Abyss extra deck in a very long time, um, and I will explain why. So I'm playing the Stone King Darius and the Deuce Machinix. Um, so if anyone knows me, they know that I actually love DDD. DDD is in like my top five favorite decks of all time. Um, uh, it's actually DDD was the first deck that I top aided a regional with. Um, and it was pre structure, like before the structure deck cards came out. Um, so I love this deck. And the cool part about this engine is that it plays around rivalry because, like, that's the thing. Like, you summon two BAs and they flip rivalry. It's like, oh, well, I can't make Dante. What do I do? Well, you can go ahead and you can make your Darius and then you can stack your Machine X on top of the Darius. Um, and now you have basically three monster interruptions, which is insane. Like, that's absolutely nuts. So to me, playing this is crazy. And on top of that, you go ahead and you stack these. Uh, you turn your two burning, burning best monsters into a Darius, and then you stack the Deuce Machine X on top of the Darius. Uh, this is 3k. You beat over one of their monsters, and then main phase two, you can just slap a Zeus on top, and like you're you're literally good um, to have two sends, and you don't have to worry about making a downward magician. Like you can literally just toss a Zeus right on top. So, yeah, I think that this is actually really crazy. Um, if you guys aren't on this already, like definitely get on it. Like this is a pretty cheap engine to pick up for the most part too. So. Uh, next, we have the the Downward Magicians that I just spoke of. Um, this card's really good. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Like, I, I love playing two of this. Um, it's also, like, this is the other thing. Like, with playing Pot of Prosperity, I'm perfectly fine with playing Pot of Prosperity because I know that I can banish a lot of cards from my extra deck and not worry about it because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still have a pretty strong grind game and my opponent is going to struggle. So yeah, playing the two uh, downers is actually really sweet. And then Double Zeus. Um, Double Zeus is really good. If I was playing just like strictly XYZ monsters, then I would play a third. I do have a third. Um... 
I, I'm going to toy around with some builds and kind of see what I like. But yeah, uh, two Zeus is perfectly fine. This card just says, hey, uh, goodbye to your board. So then we'll go on to the Link Monsters. I'm just going to show you the four that I'm playing. Play the Cherubini, the IP, the Unicorn, and uh, the Access Code. So um, I wanted to stray away from Link Monsters as much as possible in this build. But I also wanted to see, like, if I included certain Link Monsters, what ones worked best. And for me, these work best for multiple reasons. So the Cherubini allows you to Link Climb into your Unicorn and then your Access Code. That way you can go ahead and hit for big damage um, and pop your opponent's board, which is important. And then the IP, if you do go first, it does at least give you the IP line where you can end on Beatrice IP, which gets you basically Unicorn and, uh, you know, and shuffling your opponent's cards back and whatnot. So um, I think that these are, if you're going to play Link Monsters, these are the best Link Monsters to play. Um, Gravity Controller is not that great. Uh, people are always like, oh, play Gravity Controller. So if you open, what if you open Seer and, and all that? I'm like, listen, it, it it's so minimal that you're going to open just sear in another ba and even if you do you're probably going to be able to hit something off of your mills like if you go ahead and you normal sear special ba and then you hit a graph or a rhino warrior which by the way you have six of at that point so your chances of hitting one off of milling three cards is somewhat decent um then you just special skarm and then you have like full combo so like i i don't see a reason to play gravity controller card's not really that good um it, ju it just takes up an extra deck space that you don't need to take up um and then additionally the other card is Appaloosa. um if you open up the seer ba card then your cherubini effectively uh gets you to a three negate Appaloosa, which like sure that's cool <laughs> like neat but to me i i don't i don't think that's worth it um I'm just fine with playing the, the IP to go up the uh, the link scale there and playing the chair beanie for it um, as well if I need to use it going second. But most of the time, um, the link monsters are late game. Like early game, I'm using XYZ monsters. So uh, yeah, that's the link lineup. Uh, but that's the entirety of the extra deck. If I were to put like... Um, xyz monsters in in place of the link monsters i'd probably put in a break sword um for sure i'd contemplate a third dante but i don't know if i'd play one honestly um i'd probably play either grand pulse or alucard um i just i i, I have i have four ulti alucards so like i just kind of would throw it in um i would I would think about playing a levy year because if we do play the fairy tale snow and like that's actually kind of important uh, being able to do stuff like that and i would also consider like the utopic future package um as a possibility so if you wanted to cut the link monsters as a whole and play something else that's that's the advice that i'd personally give um uh, that's just my opinion uh let's go ahead and hop on over to the side deck all right so side deck is um it's it's decent i think the side deck is decent um it does it does what it needs to do and it doesn't really like look flashy <laughs> there's nothing super flashy about it like it's, it's pretty standard for me um the only thing you're gonna notice is that i'm actually not playing lancia in here a lot of people know that i always side deck lancia um, i'm not side decking it here because i actually didn't think it was like that good this format or that great in this deck um but we're playing one Necroworld Banshee and two Zombie World. Um, if you want to just play one Zombie World, you can. Um, you could cut the other one for Token Collector. I'm 50-50 right now with what I actually prefer. So, like, to me, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I want to play the two Zombie World or not. Um, it's kind of nice because I can, like, draw one, activate it, and if my opponent outs it, I can Beatrice and the Banshee and activate another, and then Flunder basically just loses... Um, there's other decks that lose too. Like it kind of hurts Sword Soul a decent amount um, and hurts Tri Brigade. So like those are three decks that you can and probably will see at a regional um, or YCS level, like all that stuff. Uh, then we have more backward removal. We have three Twister and three Evenly. So like the Evenly is multi-purpose. It's good against a lot of stuff. Um, like if you do Evenly to your opponent and they're playing the branded uh deck branded despia then like that deck doesn't have any negations you're going to take 1200 probably from double masquerade but 
like you're gonna out their board. So, and if they have a branded in red, you basically force the branded in red out at that point. So, um, yeah, I think evenly is actually really really nuts. Um, and then twister and evenly like that they're just back row stuff too. So, uh, it's also just like forcing negations is really good. Like you're playing against sword soul and you're like, okay, well goodbye to your board. Um, like that's pretty darn sweet. And then the cards that we side in always going first uh three anti-spell and three d barrier um yeah like i i don't know what else to say i've been on this card for a while um since last format with prank kids and everything this card's insane um 100 side deck this card if you can like it's just really good and the d barrier like fusion decks and synchro decks are kind of the thing right now so uh yeah you throw this in and then your opponent just cries so uh, yeah, that's the entirety of the deck. Uh, I didn't want to do a super like in-depth deck profile because everyone's seen my BA deck profiles. Um, but I do want to do another how to play video for Burning Abyss because I did one, I think last year, the year before, and that video has almost 20,000 views on it. So I want to do an updated one and teach everyone how to play BA uh, like I did in that. So uh, look out for that because there could be one coming up in the next week or two and if there is it'll be a long video like it'll probably be close to an hour long video um so i'll really go in depth with that and teach all the intricacies that really go into playing burning abyss and why i think it uh, truly is the best deck of all time but that runs out the deck profile hope everybody enjoyed it if you did give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you think down below and for right now this is drew traveler the sign traveler of the burning abyss signing out